Hi, Mike Gaben here with some more KSP math. In episode 5, I presented this formula for calculating the combined effective ISP of multiple engines, where F1, F2, etc. are the individual engine thrusts, and ISP1, ISP2, etc. are the individual engine specific impulses. I provided this formula without any proof. I did this because I didn't want to get sidetracked away from the main topic of the video. But providing formulas without proof always bugs me. I tell my students that one of the beauties of math is that you don't have to rely on authorities, including myself. Everything should be justified. So for all the math geeks like me, here comes the derivation of this formula. I want to talk about the momentum of the outgoing gases from the rocket engines. You may recall that momentum is just the mass multiplied by the velocity. For that reason, I want to work with the exhaust velocity of the gases rather than the ISP of the engines. Thankfully, the relationship between the two is simple. By definition, ISP is just the exhaust velocity divided by the gravitational field constant g0. Rearranged, that gets that the exhaust velocity equals ISP times g0. We'll keep this on reserve for now and start talking about momentum. Let's consider some time interval where a whole bunch of engines have all pushed out different masses of gases at different velocities. To calculate the total momentum of the exhaust gases, we simply sum up the products of the masses expelled and the velocity of those gases. Conversely, we can also consider the total momentum to be the sum of the masses times some effective exhaust velocity. This exhaust velocity would be like an average exhaust velocity for all the gases expelled by the engines. I'm interested in calculating what this effective exhaust velocity is. Thankfully, this is a pretty easy formula to rearrange by simply dividing the sum of the masses over to the other side. A nice little formula, but unfortunately not what I want. I don't want all those masses. I want the thrusts of the individual engines. Now, Force and mass are related together by Newton's second law of motion. Force equals mass times acceleration. Assuming a constant acceleration, acceleration is equal to the change in velocity divided by the time interval. The exhaust gases started with a relative velocity of zero. They are in the ship after all. And a final velocity that is the exhaust velocity VE. This makes acceleration equal to VE divided by the time interval delta T. This can now be rearranged for mass, getting exhaust mass equals thrust times delta T divided by VE. Let's substitute this in for all the masses in our formula. Yuck, pretty ugly, but it simplifies quickly. Let's th take this to the next slide. In the numerator, notice that each VE in the denominator of each fraction divides out with its corresponding VE beside it. In addition, all those delta t's are common to each term and can be divided away as well. This yields this formula. This is very close to the formula we want, but we need to replace the VE's with ISP's. Recall the relationship between the two. Now, let's substitute. This is really close to our formula. It's just got all these ugly g naughts in it. It's really tempting to just assume that these divide away as well, but hold on, cowboy. We can't just assume reality is what we want it to be. With fractions inside fractions, these g naughts are slippery. Let's take our time and take this formula over to our final slide. On the right side, the g naughts are clearly a common factor to all those denominators of the fractions in the bottom. Let's take them out to the right. Having something in the denominator of fraction is just another way of dividing by that something. So let's slide the 1 over g naught out of the big fraction like this. Dividing by a fraction means multiplying by the reciprocal. So we can rewrite the right side of the equation like this. In this rearranged form, it is now very clear that the g naughts are a common factor to both sides of the equation. We can now confidently divide it away, finally yielding the desired formula. This video was mostly about satisfying my math OCD, but if you still are with me here at the end, I'm assuming you found it worthwhile too. One of the things I hope that comes out of these videos are people seeing a different application for all that high school math. This now concludes this video. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.